Hello. The topic for today is autonomous cars, self-driving cars. There are a lot of challenges about them, and the two that top questions in most people's heads are: Are they going to be okay? Is it good? Do we, we have? Can we trust them? And the second question is: Will they work? Is it even possible that they could drive by themselves in real world? And if so, when will we have them? Of those two questions, I think the easier one is the ethics and the morality, which I will get to at the end. But let me talk about the first question, which is how real are autonomous cars? How real? Will it really be for a car to drive all by itself? And I will give you the short answer first. I think it is very, very real, but not in the short term. I think it's going to be 15 years, 20 years, before we'll have cars that could drive all by themselves through a city. From end to end, and pick you up and take you home, it, with all the other things going on in the city. Now, that may be 15 years or 20 years, but even that's not the whole story because we're not going to be able to just replace existing cars today with self-driving cars. I don't think that's going to work. It's going to take us. To remake streets and roads, and to to, to re-engineer them in some ways, to make them workable by self-driving cars. In other words, I don't think any kind of self-driving car for the next 50 years would be able to drive on the existing street and infrastructure that we have today. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding. Signage,、um, support, um, lasers, uh, antennas,、um, all kinds of things to streets, and taking away certain things in order to make them viable for self-driving cars. In the beginning, I think self-driving cars are going to be driving on certain lanes on certain roads that are designated as self-driving car lanes. So they have their own space at first, and maybe they will can park into certain kind of parking structures. So we're going to have to kind of remake our world to make it suitable for the self-driving car. Just as we changed our roads from footpaths and horse carts, and we changed them to make them ready for automobiles. So automobiles cannot. Ride on the same roads that we had before, that were dirt and potholed, and they, they were, there were no signs. So we remade our streets to fit automobiles. Today, we're going to remake our roads and streets to fit the self-driving car, and that's going to take many decades of work, and it won't happen all at once. It'll happen in pieces, just as the cars themselves will. Go through different levels of ability, and as they increase in ability, they probably will have and depend on more and more of the alterations that we're going to make in the environment. So, cities will look different from self-driving car, in part because we are going to actually remake them and those streets a little different to fit self-driving cars. Now, and they will all look different. Some will be very small, one person that can be used in maybe in, in inner city, and then we can have very larger ones like a pickup truck that might be used for out in a country road that may not be able to drive in the area that a one person pod, self-driving pod, might be. We could have pod chain trains where you link up a bunch of pods together, so. I think one of the things that we should also expect is that we're not going to just have like a Corolla that drives itself. The self-driving cars 
plural, were probably many new types of vehicles that we don't have today. They may, they're not going to be the same vehicle taking out the person. They're going to be a different kind of vehicle. They will look different. Now, one of the f things that I'm pretty sure about this in the 20 years is that there'll be more bandwidth to your self-driving car than to your home. Because what are we humans going to do inside the car when it's driving it itself? We're going to be playing games or doing work. And we're going to ha want to have connected. We're going to be connected to other people. Or maybe we're going to go somewhere in a VR. And we're going to explore some alternative planet. So there's going to be a huge amount of bandwidth, both to drive the car by itself and to entertain us or to ha allow us to work. So these are going to be, the Internet of Things is going to extend into the world of automobiles. And the automobile vehicles will be more connected than even our houses are because they're going to be part of this very large network. So um, there will be networked automobiles. Again, they, they, they aren't just going to be the same car minus a human driver. They're going to be in entirely different kinds of vehicles. Some of them meant for entertainment, some of them meant for work, and they will be connected via large bandwidth, G5 and stuff like that, to form a network of automobiles that will be very, very smart because they will know each other are, and so the traffic patterns will be completely different. Maybe we don't even need streetlights because they all are keeping track of where they are and they know where the other cars are. So the picture that you want to have of the future of autonomous driving is not just replacing, taking out the steering wheel for an existing car, but to imagine different kinds of vehicles that don't exist today and different kinds of streets and roads that don't exist today because there will be so much infrastructure, new infrastructure that will be required to keep these on the road. So that's the technical side. Then there's the ethical side, which is, will they be safe? Will they really drive better than humans? And can we trust them? Can we trust them to not hurt people who are pedestrians? Or what happens if, if, if an auto-driven car kills somebody? Who's responsible? So these are the kinds of ethical and moral questions that many, many people are, 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 wor are working on. And I would say a couple of things about that. One is that it's actually not very difficult to program ethics into a machine, an AI, a brain, a car. We can do that very easily because it's just code. A law, if you a law like in a book of laws, is code. You can just type it out and you can put it in. It's a very, it's a very logical if-then structure, which we understand, and engineers are very good at inserting. So we can make cars and auto-driven cars who are making decisions, we can give them ethics. That's not difficult. The difficulty that we have is that we don't know what ethics to give them. We don't agree among ourselves as humans what's important and what's not. We, our own ethics are very, very shallow and immature. So the real work about giving morality and ethics to self-driving car is on our side, trying for us to understand what it is that we want to tell the cars to do. Because once we understand what we can tell them, that's very easy. But we have troubles right now figuring out, well, if a car is driving down the road, who should it have priority in safety? Should it be the passenger or the pedestrian? And that's a very difficult question, and it probably isn't really answerable, and it probably does depend on each situation. And those are the hurdles that we have right now. They're not really embedded in the technology. They're on our own minds because we have to suddenly confront the fact that we often haven't answered this ourselves. We don't have an answer, and we still drive around without answering that. But now we kind of demand an answer, so it's a very difficult question. 
But it is very clear that we will give these devices and these AIs some decision power. They will be able to make a decision and sometimes they will indeed make the wrong decision and they, somebody might die. And the question is, well, who's responsible? And we have some experience with, with that today with you have a pet and if you have an animal and an animal hurts or kills somebody, who's responsible? Well, the owner of the animal is. And so we have, we have a kind of an existing understanding about responsibility. And even though these cars, these automobiles, will in fact be making decisions, there will be a number of different parties responsible for the decisions. Part of them will be the engineers who design the software. Some of it will be the car manufacturer who accepted the software. And some will be the owner of the car. I don't think we're going to have a single ownership function. I think it will be spread among many different parties with different parties having different roles, just as we have today in real life. So this is a tractable problem. This is a problem we know how to solve. We will have plenty of time to solve it because th this is not going to happen next year. It's not going to happen in four years. It's not going to happen in five years. This is going to take a generation of increasing progress little by little, very, very narrow places where it begins, restricted areas where the drivers can let go of the steering wheel, certain lanes, certain parts of the city, certain cities. It will happen over time and we will have plenty of time ourselves to try to answer these questions about how do we make the AIs driving these cars, how do we keep them aligned with our human values so that they give priority to the same kinds of things that we would if we were driving and didn't have to think so fast. So I'm very optimistic about the changes that self-driving cars will bring. I think there's plenty of opportunity and it will take decades for it to be complete. There will be many new types of vehicles and types of transportation developed and we will actually change our cities and change our roads in response to making this work. So it's a big project. Thank you for your attention.